All right, guys, pre-algebra, um, lesson 4.2 here, talking about rational number representation. So um, in this section, we're going to be able to define and recognize rational numbers. We will represent re uh, repeating decimals using bar notation and then converting a repeating decimal to a fraction. So we'll kind of walk through that. Um, the biggest thing, though, here is, uh, is what a rational number even means. Okay, and you can see the definition there. Rational number, um, there's two definitions they, um, on the left here, math terms. It's any number that can be written as the ratio, okay? And if you look at the word rational, it starts with ratio. Um, so a ratio of two integers, A over B, where the divisor B is not zero. So basically all that's saying, any number that can be written as a fraction is considered rational. So let me just do a little side note here, basically just a quick little... Um, all right, so let's take a look at a few examples. Um, let's see what we can do with these rational numbers. So um, number one, if, if rational numbers need to be able to be expressed as fractions, how can decimals also be rational numbers? So that was what we were doing in the last section, okay? And I just did a previous example. So let's just do a little quick one, like an example. Let's say the number is 0.123 or something, right? And we want to express that as a fraction. So since it terminates, we can do that, right? The numerator just becomes the digits that we see, and the denominator, we're just counting the place values, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. So it would be 123 over 1,000. So any decimal that terminates is a rational number. Okay, um, number two here, can we convert the following fractions into decimals? We also did this in the previous section. Okay, so just doing division on a calculator, 7 divided by 20 is 0 0.35. 6 out of 25 is going to be 0 0.24. Okay, so just a little review there. Um, so some decimals are terminating decimals like these. Okay, terminating decimals have a finite or limited number of digits. Okay, so we just saw that those do not go on forever like the number pi goes on forever. Okay, um, here's a couple other examples to write as a, um, as a ratio of two integers just to practice a little more. So this first number, um, again, it would be 65 over, count the digits after the decimal, tenths, hundredths, so 65 over 100. Um, then we could reduce, I'm not going to do that right now, just to save a, a little bit of time, um, 0 0.0004. Okay, so again, the numerator, of course, is 4. If we count the digits... Zero, zero, four, so tenths, hundredths, then thousandths. And that one would need to be reduced as well. Okay, and we've kind of just been doing number four, how do we, um, how any terminating decimal can be written as a fraction, just do what we just did. Considered rational, like the ones we did here. Right, these decimals ended. They had a finite number of spaces. It wasn't going on forever. So those are the options, either it must end diagram for you. So basically, for uh, for numbers, there's there's really two types. There are, there are real numbers, okay, um, which pretty much everything we deal with will be real numbers um, until you get to maybe Algebra 2. Um, and then there are what are called imaginary numbers, and you'll get a lot more into those Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc and beyond. And basically the idea is um, to be an imaginary number would be something like, think about like the square root of a negative number, like the square root of negative 4. Right. We saw in the previous sections um, the square root of positive 4 would be 2, right? because 2 times 2 is 4. But the square root of negative 4 is basically asking you, is there a number that you can multiply by itself to get negative 4? And really, there's no real number that does that, right? Because you might be thinking, well, is the answer negative 2? Is it negative 2? If you take negative 2 times negative 2, right, to square it means multiply by itself, does that get you negative 4? And the answer is no, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So um, I don't want to get into too much time on that. But basically, imaginary numbers are going to be um, when you get the square root of a negative number. Um, but again, that's coming up later, so it's something to look forward to. Um, with real numbers, though, which is, again, what all of this class and beyond the next couple years will be about, um, they can all be divided into two groups. There are irrational numbers. And there are rational numbers, okay, which this section is about, right? So rational numbers can be written as a fraction. Sorry, I have no idea why my writing is so sloppy right now. Okay, as a fraction or ratio. 
Okay, so irrational, irrational is the opposite. Right? It cannot be written as a fraction. So um, a common example of an irrational number is like the number pi. You may have seen that. It has a lot to do with circles and a lot of other things. Um, but its value, it's approximately 3.14159 two, six, dot, 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 dot. It goes forever. Okay, there is no pattern, or there's no repeating pattern. There's no end. That decimal goes on forever. There's actually, there's competitions where people uh, can see how far they can recite this out, and I think people can do like thousands of digits. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting and kind of crazy at the same time. Um, but that number, because the decimal never ends, cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, we saw in the last section a little bit you know, as an example, something like, um, let's just say the number is 0.65 or something, right? Since that decimal ends, we know we can write that as a fraction as 65 over, remember it's tenths and hundredths, and then we could reduce and all that stuff. So anytime a decimal ends, or the fancy word is terminates, okay, we can, we're able to write it as a fraction, and we're going to do some of that today. Okay, um, numbers that do not terminate and do not have a repeating pattern cannot be written as fractions, so therefore they're irrational. Okay, so let's get into a little bit some of the examples here. To be All right, so let's look at um, some other examples here. Some decimals are repeating decimals. Okay, they have one or more digits following the decimal point that repeat endlessly. So, like, for example, 0 0.7777777777, seven, 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 that, that, and it goes on forever. That is a repeating decimal, okay? Same with 2.5, one, 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 If that goes on forever, those are repeating decimals. So take a look over here at the, uh, the notation for that. Once you figure out what digit is repeating, you don't want to sit there and have to write 77777 seven, 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 like a forever or just a whole bunch of them. So once it repeats, you can put that little bar over the top. And that is a symbol to let someone know that it repeats, okay? And just look for the second one, the 2.51. The bar is only over the 1 because that is the only thing that repeats, okay? So let's take a look. Um, one third, if you were to divide 1 divided by 3, you get this 0 0.3333. 3. So that can be written, since the 3 repeats, 0.3 with a bar over it, okay? 4 ninths is going to be 0.44444. So that one, since the 4 repeats, it's going to be 0.4 with the bar over it, okay? It's not just 0.4, okay? Let me say one thing on the side here while I'm thinking about it. 0.49 is 0.4444. It goes forever, which allows us to write it with the bar over it, okay? 4 tenths, 4 divided by 10 is exactly 0.4, okay? So... When we write 4 ninths, we have to put the bar over it. We can't just round that to 0.4. Okay, so it's different. 4 ninths and 4 tenths are definitely different numbers. Okay, and then 5 sixths, if I do that on my calculator, I see that it is 0 0.83333. 3. So again, using the bar notation, I'm going to put 0 0.8. Then I only need to put 3 once with the bar over it. That lets me know that the uh, 3 is the digit that repeats. All right, so let's talk about um, these other ways. How do we know that a repeating decimal can be written as a fraction and thus be rational? So here's an example, okay? Um, they're going to take the, the decimal 0.5111111, okay? There's this little process. Now, you guys are not going to be required to do this process because um, it's kind of just a weird little method, but um, it's going to show us that this decimal, going through a few steps here, and we're going to do one in a second, you can figure out what the fraction is, okay? And since the fraction, um, or I'm sorry, since the decimal up here is able to be written as a fraction down here, that means that it is a rational number. So what this is gonna do, all this is gonna do is just kinda prove to us um, that these repeating decimals are actually rational numbers, okay? And again, I, I'm, I, I'm not gonna ask you guys to do this, maybe as an extra credit question or something, um, but again, I just want it to become proof um, that it is possible. So let's take a look, for example, at um, example A here. Can we convert the following repeating decimals into fractions? Okay, so 
what we're going to do is first we're going to say, I'm just going to set x equal to the, uh, the decimal itself. Okay. And then the trick is, and this is kind of the weird part again, so don't worry about like having to do this on your own, but just kind of follow me. If I multiply both sides by 10, I'll get 10x. Okay, remember multiplying by 10 is just going to move that decimal to the right. It's going to make this number become 4.4444. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is that so the things after the decimal point line up. Meaning, when I subtract these two equations from each other, okay, think about taking 1x, subtract 10x, you get negative 9x. And then this decimal, 0, 0.44444 minus 4.44444, all the 4s just kind of cancel out because you're just subtracting them anyways. So the 0 minus 4 becomes negative 4. Okay, and when I solve that for x, and I divide both sides by negative 9, x equals negative 4 over negative 9, and a negative divided by a negative, of course, is positive. And we were able to come up with the value of the fraction, okay, and if you check 4 divided by 9, you will see that it does equal that decimal. Okay, so again, all this is doing, it's not something you have to do. It's just a way to show you that if a decimal is repeating, it is then able to be converted to a fraction, which thus makes it rational, okay? So repeating decimals are rational. Okay, otherwise the decimal must terminate, right? It must end or there must be a repeating pattern to make these decimals uh, turn into rational numbers. Okay. So the assignment, what I want you guys to work on, is um, on this page here, we're gonna do numbers six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, if you wanna try, like 11 um, may show up on a quiz or test as an extra credit question. If you wanna try to do that, um, you can, but that's not a requirement for uh, the assignment today. All right.